Friends, Father Frank Pavone here, National Director of Priests for Life, speaking to you from our New York headquarters. This is the third installment of the You Need to Vote video series that I'm doing here on Facebook. Uh, and today I want to uh, address a very simple point about why we need to vote. And that is that the consequences of our vote or of our failure to vote are going to impact our children, grandchildren, and the entire nation. Now, if we want to talk about Christian virtue, does it have anything to do with making life better or worse for other people, especially the people in your own family? Children, grandchildren, if we think ahead, does this election, we have to start with one basic question, does this election carry any consequences for our children and grandchildren? Does the direction of the Supreme Court, which has ruled five to four on all the major moral issues in the last couple of years, for example, a recent case in Texas on abortion, five to four decision, case on, on gay marriage, five to four decision, case on Obamacare, five to four decision, a case about religious freedom in Hobby Lobby, five to four decision, court has been split down the middle, one of the, one of the better justices passed away, Justice Scalia, now in the next few years more vacancies will be filled. Do we not think that this election is going to have consequences for the way that the Supreme Court goes on these basic moral questions, and not to mention all the other federal courts, too. And what impact will that have for your children and grandchildren? Will they be able to practice their faith in the United States of America? Let's just ask ourselves that question. Will transgenderism and, and uh, all kinds of sexual perversion that the philosophy of Planned Parenthood is going to be embedded into these court decisions... Is that going to affect them? Is that going to affect them? So we have a consequential election here. And the consequences of the election are one of the many reasons why we need to vote. In the beginning of the Mass, what do we say when we ask forgiveness from God? We ask forgiveness for what we have done and for what we have failed to do. That is also a choice when we fail to do something. I'm not going to participate in this election, some will say. So I fail to cast a vote. Now, presumably, if you do cast a vote, just like every other choice you make in life, every other choice you make in life, you're going to choose the best of the available alternatives. That's what you do when you go to... Uh, Look in the in the yellow pages, you know, who's there for an auto mechanic? Who's there for a dentist? Don't you try to choose the best of the available options? Or do you say, because I don't find the de kind of dentist here that I want, I'm not going to go to the dentist anymore. Because I don't find the kind of doctor that I want, I'm going to ignore my health. Because I don't find the menu on the item, uh, the menu item in this restaurant that I prefer, I'm going to, I'm going to starve. No, every choice in life, we choose the best of the possible alternatives. So I'm presuming, for the sake of this discussion, for those that are not going to vote, that were they to vote, they would choose the best of the available options. Okay, so then if you would choose the best of the available options, but you don't, here's a logical question. Do you make it harder for the better person to win? Well, of course you do. If you would have chose the better, it doesn't, doesn't matter what you think about them. If you would have chosen the better of the two, but you're going to refrain altogether, then you made it harder for the better of the two to win. Okay, so that's a consequence. Now, in, 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 when we evaluate the morality of our action, we look at the action itself, the motive, and the circumstances. And the consequences are part of the circumstances. Lord, I'm sorry for what I have done and for what I have failed to do. So we ask forgiveness from God for the things we have failed to do. Why? Because the failure to do something also has consequences. And so, brothers and sisters, I ask you again. Is the election about our good or what makes us feel good? Or is it about the common good? It's about the common good. So we ask ourselves, all right, who is going to institute the policies? And not just the individual, but the party. As I've explained in previous videos, we're electing an entire army of people when we elect somebody to the, uh, to the White House. 
We elect an entire army of people. So does that party line up with the defense of life, with the defense of marriage and family, with the defense of religious freedom, with the defense of what is right and good on the fundamental level? What kind of justices and judges are going to be appointed to the federal courts? These kinds of consequential decisions are now part of our responsibility. And something I can't quite figure out on the part of those who think that it is an option not to vote at all or to skip voting for the presidency. Friends, this makes no sense to me because the question that arises in my mind is what, what country are you going to be living in after the election? And your children and your grandchildren and your friends and, in fact, everybody else in the country, what country are they going to be living and what laws are they going to be living under? What court decisions are they going to be living under? If enough people don't vote to sway the election the wrong way, they've done an injustice not only to themselves, their children, their grandchildren, but to all the rest of us. It's like, thanks a lot. You know, you let, you let, you let evil take over immoral prince practices and policies and court decisions. Talk about sexual morality. Look at the sexual morality that's going to be codified in the law and in Supreme Court decisions that is, has already begun to be codified. And, 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 and that, that kind of morality and immorality doesn't matter? There's the very same people that are saying, oh, well, there's immorality here, there's immorality there. Listen, there's immorality everywhere. And, and somehow it matters and on, 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 a, on a personal level and it doesn't matter on a national level? What country are the people who are not going to vote going to be living in after those who are elected start signing those laws and passing those court decisions that make life a living hell because of the immorality that gets codified into law and into those decisions. Brothers and sisters, this is a key dimension of this whole evaluation uh, of whether to vote in this election. Again, as we've already pointed out in the first of this video series, voting is an obligation, not only when it is difficult uh, or easy, but also when it is difficult. Not only when um, uh, it's simple, but also when we have to do more homework. Now, interestingly, on my uh, Facebook uh, page, uh, somebody said in reference to my various comments on voting, well, I hope they tax him. You know what? Let me, let me make it easy right now. Take the money. Take the money. Oh, I hope they tax him. You think this is about taxation? You think this is about tax-exempt status? Not only do those who believe in the faith have a willingness to part with their money, they have a willingness to part with their life. We will be jailed, we will be martyred if need be, but we will say what needs to be said, and we will do what needs to be done. If anybody out there thinks they can intimidate or silence us, with some kind of threat of taxation, not only are you playing in the wrong ball game, you're, you're living in the wrong universe. You, you study the history of Christianity, because that's who we are. We are members of the body of Christ, of the one who went to the cross for us. We're going to stop at nothing in order to stand up for what is right, and for what is true, and for what is just. And by the way, there is no law of course, those that are trying to, some of those that are trying to get elected would like to pass one. But there is no law that says that because I wear this, I lose my rights as citizen, of citizenship. Or, more, more to the point, that I can't even teach the very things that the church teaches uh, it, it, just because uh, they offend some people politically. If some people are offended politically, listen, we've only just begun. We've only just begun. We're going to stand and preach and teach and declare and mobilize and foster what is right and what is true and what is just. Uh, and then there was another person who heard me talking about these things uh, on my Facebook page. And she said, well, uh, this, is, this is very uh, disappointing. Uh, I am going to unfollow you right now. And uh, I hope you, uh, you grow in conscience. Well... 
you know, I think here's what we should do. Uh, I find that very satisfying, and, and I'm sure that this person does too. I think this person should follow me again and then let me block her, and then the next day I'll unblock her, and she can unfollow me. And we can kind of go back and forth in sort of a, you know, mutual uh, satisfaction kind of arrangement uh, every day between now and the, and the election. Because if you think for one minute that that kind of thing means anything, uh, that, oh, well, because you're saying these things, you know, I'm going to unfollow you. What is my response to that supposed to be? Listen, we're talking about a Holocaust. We're living in the midst not only of a Holocaust, the greatest Holocaust that the world has ever known, the ongoing Holocaust of abortion. And we need to elect public servants, as I've said many times, who know the difference between serving the public and killing the public. But we're also living at a moment where, again, our nation is about to institutionalize major evil uh, in, I'm talking about in law and public policy, in court decisions, in the makeup of, of, uh, of our federal courts. So brothers and sisters, continue pushing forward. So many of you are pushing forward with us. And don't waste a lot of time in discussion with those that are thick up here. Move towards those that agree with you already, that agree with us already, and mobilize them to vote. Early voting has now started in the state of Ohio. Early voting is in place in a lot of other uh, states, and some of them very much swing states in this election. Focus your time and energy on the people who already agree with you, who think the way you think, and get them to the polls, remind them to vote, have them vote early, Spend as much time and energy as you can between now and the end of November 8th mobilizing others to vote. That's the name of the game right now. Uh, we can have the philosophical discussions uh, with the people who are, don't seem to be listening on November 9th and then all the way through the year. But right now, in this remaining window of time, it's the ground game. It's a numbers game. Get the people uh, that do listen to you, that do trust you, that do agree with you. Uh, into those voting booths as early as possible. Uh, and so nothing on Election Day then will interfere with them getting their, their vote cast. Obviously, anything can happen. Bad weather, sickness, car trouble, uh, who knows what can happen uh, that could keep a person from voting. So if your state has early voting, take advantage of it and get as many others to take advantage of it as well. I thank you for listening, and um, I will be back. Uh, each day with more messages as we move forward into this election. Uh, check out youneedtovote.org. That's a special website uh, that I created in order to bring across some of these points and urge people to rise to the occasion and exercise their duty and their privilege to vote. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.